Hey everybody, welcome back again to another episode of The Art of Photography. We're going to continue on with our compositional series today, and last time we talked about rhythm. And we're making some musical metaphors and some musical comparisons, and we're obviously comparing what our case photography is a visual medium to what exists in music composition. And for me, I think this is something that's, well, it's really important, but I think it, it, it's an added dimension in your own thinking that you can start using as a photographer that is going to get you some better results and I, I, it's going to offer you a little more range, I think, in your composition and your skills as a photographer. And obviously this is something that I learned from that's very important to me because I have a background in music. And we talked last time about rhythm and, you know, kind of the comparison if you have a beat so you know if that's drums if it's piano whatever it is music has some kind of pulse that happens on a regular tempo per se and that's exactly what we're talking about today is tempo now it's really interesting we're gonna go look at some photos but I, I think this is probably to me one of the most interesting techniques in photography because essentially what we're doing is we're interpreting something that is a still image we're capturing with still photography a moment that exists in a fraction of a second in time and how do you display tempo speed movement the passing of time within something that is basically a slice of time that is frozen so i think the best way to illustrate this is if we look at some images so come on with me and let's have a look We've talked about rhythm on this show before, and in this video I want to talk about tempo, and it's related somewhat. Um, it also has, obviously, the parallel to, to the musical uh, terminology. And in music, tempo simply means the speed at which um, music is being played. So, for instance, and, and this also has a, a dramatic um, impression on the, the, the feel that you get from that song. So, for instance, a ballad is played very slow. It has a different feel than something that may be a funk tune that's played very fast or thrash metal or whatever you have. Uh, so, let's just say there's a big difference between the feel of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata and P-Funk. So, you know, you're going to get a different vibe from each one of those things. Obviously, those are stylistic differences too, but in terms of tempo, if you go to concerts or you shoot even hearing a DJ at a wedding, it, musicians or DJs generally when they're putting together music try to come up with a lot of variance in tempo you won't go somewhere and hear ballads all night necessarily um, it's more interesting to get that mixed up a little bit so you might have a ballad followed by something that's more medium tempo then you might have something that's very up tempo that has a huge contrast so you can create kind of these contrasts around it and a lot of that has to do with range and I, again I think your range as a photographer if you start thinking in these terms it can have a big impact on the depth of your work. Okay, so having said that, without getting too meta on you, it is very difficult to display tempo in a still image. And it is difficult because we don't think of those terms. You're looking at something that is a frozen fraction of a second in time. How does it have speed or time itself associated with it? And I have some examples. This is very difficult to do. Uh, there's some photographers that I think do it very well. And I want to show you a couple images. The first one I want to start with, we'll start with something that's conventional and then we'll move up. This is Joseph Hoffner, and uh, he is an amazing photographer and very well known for these medium format square images that he does. This image would look completely different without the birds here. Now this does relate to rhythm as well, you know, we, which we talked about in the rhythm episode. And if you check out the way the birds are kind of swarming and flocking, it adds a lot of vibrancy to this image. It gives it some activity and it, it stirs things up a little bit. And you can imagine this would be a much different looking image if it did not have those birds in there. If you look at Joseph Hoffner's work, and I encourage you to do so, I'll put a link in show notes. Uh, he generally deals with things that we associate as moving um, metaphorically in his images that do give it a tempo and a vibrancy. You know, we've looked at the planes uh, landing on the beach. And if you haven't checked that out, I'll, I'll link these in the show notes. I don't want to get too off topic here. Um, so go check that out on the website if you want. But that's something that I think he's very conscious of. And to me, this reflects tempo. And it can be slow, it can be fast, what, what you have. Um, Another interesting photo, this is Ori Gerst, who is a, um, oh, a very popular these days contemporary photographer. And he's known for doing these beautiful classical still lifes that he blows up. And so what you're seeing here is an arrangement of flowers that has exploded. And this is part of the blow up series. He actually freeze dries these and then I, I assume uses firecrackers or something to get the explosion going. But there's a high level of density. There's a high level of activity. And I start to think of this as something that, that has a lot of fast motion in it. Um, and that has to do with, one, the density, and two, the fact that it's 
flowers exploding. And that's a very weird thing, too, because you normally don't think of something like flowers as blowing up. They're not the right kind of material to do that necessarily. Um, and he had to make some modifications to get these photographs. But they're beautiful, and I think Orgerst is amazing. He does some unbelievable work, and you got to check him out. Um, Again, we use this in the, the rhythm episode too, but again, a way of slowing things down. This is Brian David Griffith, and this is, again, the figure ascending the staircase, and it has a very much slower tempo, almost a ballad feel. And a lot of that is the lack of activity that's going on. It has to do with the pacing and the rhythm also, but you know, we're looking in terms of density on some of these things. Whereas this image, this is Brian David Griffith also, because of what he's doing with the focus in this, it's almost like you know, zooming in and out and taking the photo during that zoom. So you have motion blur or it, it tends to make it look like you, the viewer are moving uh, towards this stationary subject, which is, you know, this person standing amongst trees and it has a very different feel to it. It's not overly complicated or dense like the Ori Gersht, but it does have a faster tempo to it because that motive or the motion suggestion is, is certainly a play here. Having said that, and if you look at some of these blurred type images, um, this is a, a fabulous photographer. This is, uh, and I'll, I'll link to all these guys in the show notes to so check it out. Uh, this is this is Henschke Karinchow, and he does these amazingly beautiful pictures. A lot of square images. Um, this is you know this guy riding a horse, and the motion blur. There's very little in focus in here is a dead simple beautiful image and i think there's a lot of motion there's a very fast feel to this in fact i think this may be an example because i have such a lush feeling that comes out of this despite all that activity we're unlike music where mixing like a ballad and something that's much more uptempo is is really harder to do because you do have an identifiable pulse that comes with with music i think visually you can start to create things that that start to mix these and go beyond which is one of the things that i think makes still photography so amazing that you don't get in video even and um implied motion is a strong thing so anyway again tempo and uh, a couple more images here that i want to look at um these are wonderful images by the great alexei tedarenko uh, who is a russian photographer and I, I just find these simply stunning a whole series of photographs he's made this kind of his style um you, you can find a lot of information on the internet like i said i'll link to him but you see these are these are essentially landscape images that are done with very, very long exposures. So you have a crowd of people that are coming down these stairs. The crowd almost looks like smoke. It's, it's amazingly intense. Um, I'll show you some others. There, there's a whole series of these he's done, these people coming upstairs. And, you know, this is basically stop the lens down, figure out how to do a really long time-lapse exposure and let people do their natural passing. It creates, again, this mixed tempo of fast and slow because it's almost like, because you don't see any stationary figures in here, that it's almost like a ghost town with this influx of, you know, a windstorm, a dust storm, ghosts, water, whatever, smoke, whatever that, you know, your, your metaphor tends to be on something like this. And here's one more. Anyway, I think it's really interesting. And he takes this to the nth degree. And I think he's so good at it. Um, Beautiful work, wonderful photographer, some guy we need to talk a lot more about on this show. And then finally, uh, this is an image that I took last week, um, and I rarely show my own work on here, but this is actually something, the reason I'm sharing this with you, that I was consciously thinking of. This is the great Korean-born Japanese artist Liu Fan. And Liu Fan is part of oh, a, a wonderful movement in the 1960s of avant-garde Japanese artists that were dealing a lot with uh, themes of nature in their work and in their sculpture and certainly a lot of minimalist ideals as well. And I, I got a chance to photograph him. This was after he was recreating one of his pieces from 1968, which involves dropping a large rock onto a sheet of glass and you just get the cracks in it. But what struck me is what's interesting about Liu Fan is the way he moves. He's very direct but very thoughtful, very slow. As soon as this piece was finished, he was kind of standing there and everybody starts running around. There's preparators that, you know, the thing we got to do next. And I thought this would make an interesting shot and it took about four or five shots to get. Um, I, I kind of got lucky on this one. But this was the idea I wanted because he's very, you know, kind of entrenched in his own thought on this while people are talking to him he's standing pretty still and i slowed the exposure down so it was about half a second and which created a nice blur of everybody else going which again using tempo what i was trying to do here was to isolate the subject his relationship to his work of art and then the people around him so anyway some stuff to think about and uh you know obviously this is a pretty advanced 
topic and you know i would i would look for work that displays this for you um and not just stop here at these i would check out the links that i'm going to send because most of these artists or most of these photographers tend to work like this a lot and uh you know try this in your own work it's it's hard it's challenging you have to figure out the technique to get things right sometimes but uh introducing and using motion blur um, and allowing that to contrast and allowing that to dictate the tempo of which a still photograph is speaking, I think is one of the strongest things you could possibly do uh, in any kind of visual medium, particularly photography. So anyway, if you've got any questions or anything, hit me up on the Flickr, the Twitter, the Facebook, well, your social media of choice. And uh, you can always visit the website too, which is theartofphotography.tv. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. I will see you all next time.